For God bless you, it's a joy to come into your homes. And if you're ever in our area, please stop by and be a part of one of our services. These are the finest people in all of Houston right here at Lakewood, and we'd love to see you. Thanks for tuning in today. I'd like to start with something funny. I heard about this lady who was so stressed out and overworked that she needed a break. But she knew her boss wouldn't let her off unless she acted crazy. So she stood on top of her desk, put both hands over her head like a circle, and the boss came in and asked, What are you doing? she said. I'm a light bulb. I'm putting off light, he said. You need to go home. You're not thinking clearly. Get some rest. She walked out and her co-worker started to follow her. The boss asked, where are you going? She said, I'm going home too. I can't work in the dark. Say it like you mean it. This is my Bible. I am what it says I am. I have what it says I have. I can do what it says I can do. Today I will be taught the word of God. I boldly confess. My mind is alert. My heart is receptive. I will never be the same. In Jesus' name, God bless you. I want to talk to you today about being faithful in the routine. There are times in life when we feel like we're going in circles. We're doing the right thing but not making much progress. We don't see anything changing. It's easy to lose our passion and get discouraged. But one test we all have to pass is being faithful when nothing new is happening. We're just going to work, raising children, coming home, doing the same thing again and again. It's easy to be our best when things are falling into place. That doesn't take much. But what about when you're doing your best but your marriage isn't improving, or you're honoring God but not seeing an increase? Will you trust Him when it feels like you're going in circles? Will you stay passionate when you're doing the same thing over and over? When you're in the routine, something is happening. Your spiritual muscles are getting stronger. You're being prepared. The routines of life may not be exciting, but they are necessary. You won't become all you were created to be without being your best when life is mundane. Be excellent, have a good attitude, even when it's just another ordinary day. You might think, when is this going to change? But understand this principle, you're being prepared. When God can trust you to be faithful in the ordinary, He'll take you into the extraordinary. When you're faithful in average days, then you will see exceptional days. Sometimes we're frustrated because we don't see progress and don't understand why. God will always put bigger things in your spirit. You may be dealing with something mediocre, but God is preparing you for something great. David was anointed to be king as a young man, but then God sent him back to the shepherd's field. He had a king's anointing, but his anointing would supersede where he was at that time. David could have been discouraged by the menial, boring routine. If he hadn't passed the test of being faithful in the routine, he might not have reached the throne. Are you being excellent where God has you now? If you think, I don't want to work for this supervisor, I know more than him, or I don't want to live in this apartment, I want my own house, or I don't want to sing in the choir, I want to be on the stage, Remember that you'll never make it to the stage if you're not faithful where you are. You won't see promotion if you're not being your best where God has you right now. After being faithful in the shepherd's fields, David went through all kinds of unfair situations, but suddenly he took the throne. Passing the test of being faithful in ordinary days is what leads to exceptional days. That's when you'll see moments of favor where God trusts you years ahead. It's not the big things that hold most people back, it's the small things. Being unfaithful day in and day out, going to work with a good attitude, sitting in traffic without complaining, showing up to church week after week, faithful in the routine is what prepares you for promotion. You may feel like you're going in circles and not making much progress. 
You may not like where you are, but God sent you here. I know this is where I'm supposed to be, so I'm going to keep being my best, giving, serving, and helping others right where I am. We read about the heroes of faith in Scripture. Their lives seem so exciting, but the truth is, most of their lives were routine. Yes, Moses parted the Red Sea and told Pharaoh to let the Israelites go. Those were great miracles, but there were more ordinary days than exciting days. If you live from big event to big event, waiting for something exciting to keep you encouraged, you'll be disappointed. Learn to enjoy where God has you right now. This is the day the Lord has made. It may feel like you're no closer to your dreams than you were years ago, but when you do the ordinary with a good attitude, you're being prepared for the new things God has in store. Sometimes God doesn't change the circumstances because he's using the circumstances to change us. Being patient when it's taking longer than we like, staying in faith when we're not getting our way, and having a smile even when we're uncomfortable. These things help us grow, develop, and show God that we trust him. Just like David, you're not just being anointed for the throne. The scripture talks about how God is the potter and we are the clay. The potter takes a lump of clay, puts it on the wheel, and spins it around again and again. The clay might say, I don't like going in circles. I don't like this spinning. It's boring. I want to do something exciting. Let me off this wheel so I can make progress. But what the clay doesn't realize is that it's making progress while it's going in circles. The potter is forming and shaping it. It may seem routine and stuck, but the clay is coming up higher, from a lump into something beautiful. If you were to ask the clay after it was formed, it would say, the spinning was for my good. I didn't like it at the time. I couldn't see anything happening, but I wouldn't be who I am without it. You may feel like you're spinning today, doing the same thing over and over, not making much progress. But like that clay, when it feels like you're going in circles, something is happening that you can't see. You're coming up higher. God is making you and molding you. It may seem ordinary and routine, but when you're faithful where you are and keep doing the right thing, even though you're not making visible progress, you are rising higher. You may not see it, but the spinning is working for you. When Joshua was leading the Israelites toward the promised land, they came to the city of Jericho, which was surrounded by huge walls. There was no way in the natural for the Israelites to get past those walls and make it to the promised land. Joshua prayed and heard God tell him to have the Israelites march around the city of Jericho. I'm sure Joshua thought, we need to get into the city and you're telling us to walk around it. You want us to go in circles. They marched the first day, nothing. Second day, nothing. Third day, nothing. The whole time the people thought, this is a waste of time. This doesn't make sense. On the seventh day, God told them to march around the city seven times. The last time they were to let out a great shout and blow their trumpets. When they did, those huge walls came tumbling down. A great miracle. Even though the walls fell, the Israelites might have had trouble getting past the rubble. The walls were so big, but researchers have found that the walls fell in such a way that it created a perfect ramp. Some of the walls fell inward, just like an overpass, allowing the Israelites to go in and take the land. When you're faithful in the routine, God will make things happen that you couldn't make. You may have been doing the right thing for a long time and feel like you're falling behind. But God is closely watching you. He sees you walking around the walls, doing the right thing even though nothing is changing. Your time is coming. It's going to happen suddenly and unexpectedly. What looks like an ordinary day is going to turn out to be an exceptional day. You thought you'd have to march around another month or another year, but suddenly those walls are going to come down. 
God has explosive blessings in store. No wall is too big, no obstacle too high. One touch of God's favor can catapult you years ahead. Why did God have them march around in circles for seven days? Doing the same thing over and over seemed like a waste of time and didn't make sense, but marching around that city was a test. God wanted to see if they would be faithful in the routine, if they would trust Him when they were going in circles, and if they would do the right thing when it seemed ordinary. You're not always going to understand why something isn't changing, why you're not making progress, or why people won't treat you. Don't get caught up in the whys. It is simply a test. Keep being faithful where you are, and those walls will come down. When they were marching around the city, God told them not to say a word. They couldn't whisper to each other. They couldn't discuss the situation. God knew if he didn't keep them quiet, they would have talked themselves out of it. They might have thought, why are we walking around? Joshua has lost his mind. I'm thirsty. If they had gone around the walls with a negative report, even though they were doing the right thing, it would have hindered their progress. When you feel like you're going in circles and not making much progress, don't start talking about how it's never going to happen, how you'll never get well, or how your business will never take off. Do yourself a favor and zip it up. You can do the right thing with a good report. Father, thank you. You're restoring health back into me. Thank you that this is my year of yes. Just like with the Israelites, that obstacle that should have stopped you will suddenly come down. The scripture says God will make your enemies your footstool. That means instead of being a stumbling block, they will become a stepping stone so you can rise to the next level. On the surface, it might look like the shout brought the walls down, but the truth is, without the obedience of marching around the walls, the shout wouldn't have worked. We shouted, we prayed, we believed, but the shout only works if you do the first part. If you're faithful in the routine, a friend of mine came to America from India when he was 20 years old to attend Bible college. He was very poor, but a couple from California paid his way over and his tuition. Things were going well. He couldn't believe he was in America. This was a dream come true. Everything was fine until the man who was supporting him lost his job. Now this young man had no income and no money to get back home. He started going through neighborhoods asking people if he could mow their lawns, and he walked to the local grocery store and found food in dumpsters. That's how he survived for a whole year. A job came available as a janitor at the school. He was told how he was at such a disadvantage and didn't see how he could ever rise any higher. He thought that was his lot in life. But year after year, he kept being faithful. Doing the right thing, he met a young lady in school and they fell in love. The problem was, in this Bible school, they didn't approve of an Indian dating someone from America. This was many years ago, back in the 70s. He was forced to leave the school. Two years later, he married the young woman and they became youth pastors in another state. The president of that college resigned, and the board called and asked if he would become the next president. He went from having to get food out of dumpsters to cleaning restrooms, being forced to leave the school, to being in charge of the whole college. Praise God, he is a God of justice. But at the time, it seemed like he was going in circles. It seemed like nothing was happening, but God had a plan. The spinning wasn't comfortable, but it was for his good. God was preparing him to go places he had never imagined. It was all about being faithful in the routine and doing the right thing. You may have gone through some disappointments as well, maybe situations that you feel put you at a disadvantage, but no person can keep you from your destiny. No bad break can stop what God has ordained for you. Don't try to pay people back for the disappointments, the bad breaks or the betrayals. They are all a part of God's plan. 
God uses things we don't understand to push us into our purpose. Sometimes it feels like things are spinning out of control. The truth is, they are spinning in control. He won't allow the spinning unless ultimately it's going to work for your good. Now the challenge is to trust him, trust when you don't understand. When Moses was born, Pharaoh had put out a decree that all the male babies were to be killed. For three months, Moses' mother hid him. She didn't take him outside. They didn't go for a walk. Nobody knew he was there. He wasn't celebrated. They didn't have a birthday party for him. He was hidden. Sometimes God will hide you. You'll go through a season where you're not being noticed or celebrated. You have so much to offer, but you're being overlooked. Ignore these times when God hides us. These are times of proving. Are you going to keep being your best even though you're being overlooked? My father and mother started Lakewood with 1959. My dad had been overseas holding meetings with tens of thousands of people, but he knew he was supposed to come back and pastor Lakewood. For 13 years, it was like my father was hidden. The church didn't grow. My father was a great minister, dynamic and anointed, but his abilities were going unnoticed. He wasn't being celebrated like he had been overseas, and he wasn't seeing growth or increase. But those 13 years, my father was hidden. He preached to the 90 people like he was preaching to 90,000. He gave it his all. He was there for three services a week, never took time off, and lived to pour into those 90 people. He didn't ask, God, why am I not seeing any growth? Instead, he was faithful in the routine, faithful when he wasn't being celebrated, faithful when he wasn't making much progress. What he couldn't see was that he was coming up higher. His character was being developed. If you're not faithful when you're hidden, how can God trust you to be faithful when you're out in the open? The scripture says when Moses could be hidden no longer, his mother put him in a basket and sent him floating down the Nile. Out of all the people who could have found him, it just so happened Pharaoh's daughter was at the riverbank taking a bath. She heard the cries coming from the basket, took Moses in as her own, and he went from being hidden to being noticed by one of the most influential families of that day. When you pass the test of being faithful in the routine, there will come a time you can be hidden no longer. God will cause the right people to see you, to celebrate you. You'll not only be noticed, but celebrated. Those 13 years my father was hidden, but in 1972, it was like God brought him out into the open. The church began to grow from a couple hundred to thousands, you may feel like you've been hidden, overlooked, or ignored. Stay encouraged. God is about to bring you out. His favor is going to shine down on you in a new way. You're not going to have to make it happen, like Pharaoh's daughter. The right people are going to find you. Doors are going to open that you couldn't open, and promotion is going to track you down. In John chapter 2, Jesus was at a wedding in Galilee. Jesus told the servants to fill the stone pots with water. There were six of them, and they held 30 gallons each. That was 180 gallons of water that they needed. If the servants had just taken a three-gallon bucket down to the well, it would have taken 60 trips to get that much water. I can imagine the servants thought, what are we doing this for? We need wine, not water. They could have talked themselves out of it, but instead, they kept doing the ordinary pumping water, filling the pots again and again. It was water when they pumped it out. It would have been easy to stay in faith if it had suddenly turned to wine when they poured it into the pots, but nothing was changing. It was routine, ordinary. It looked like they were going in circles, but when God can trust you to be faithful in getting water, Faithful when nothing is happening, faithful when it seems ordinary, then he will take you into the extraordinary. You may be believing for wine, but all you're seeing is water. 
Be faithful in your water days. You're just doing the ordinary, going to work, being your best, raising your children, honoring God, even if you're not making any progress. Don't be discouraged. You're in your water days. The good news is that wine is coming. It's going to happen suddenly and unexpectedly. After these workers filled up the pots, after they were faithful in their water days, Jesus told them to draw some out and take it to the host of the party. When they did, it not only turned into wine, but when the host tasted it, he said, you have saved the best wine for last. When you pass this test of being faithful in the routine, God has saved the best for last. What's in your future is going to be more rewarding. I'm challenging you to stay faithful in the routine. Stay faithful when you're going in circles. Remember, the spinning is working for you. It's getting you prepared for the new things God has in store. Many of you have passed this test. You've been faithful day in and day out. I believe and declare, like Joshua, the walls that have held you back are about to come tumbling down. Like Moses, you may have been hidden, but you're about to come out into the open. God is going to turn your water into wine and take you into the fullness of your destiny. In Jesus' name, I'd like to give you an opportunity to make Jesus the Lord of your life. Would you pray with me? Just say, Lord Jesus, come into my heart. I make you my Lord and Savior. We believe you got born again. Get into a good Bible-based church and keep God in first place. The vision of Joel Osteen is the gospel that makes an eternal difference in people's lives.